The first arrival of the British in the Indian subcontinent can be traced back to the year 1608, when the English East India Company first landed on the shores of Western India as spice merchants. Initially, the English East India Company was allowed to establish a small trading settlement in the port city of Surat by the Mughal Empire, which controlled the northern half of the Indian subcontinent in the 17th century. Later on, the English East India Company was granted exclusive rights by the Mughals to reside and establish large trading posts throughout the Mughal Empire in exchange for goods and articles from the European market. The Vijayanagara Empire, which controlled much of South India at the time, also granted the English East India Company exclusive rights to establish trading centers on India's southeastern coast. Over time, the English East India Company developed into a large trading empire, with a private army of over 200,000 soldiers, and soon became increasingly involved in the regional affairs of the Indian subcontinent. During this period, some level of intermarriage and intermixing took place between British soldiers stationed in India and the native Indian population, due to the lack of British women willing to make the voyage to India. Moreover, the English East India Company initially encouraged local marriages between British soldiers and local Indian women by offering a family allowance of 15 silver rupees for each child born to a British soldier and a local Indian woman. This intermixing eventually resulted in the formation of a large population of mixed ancestry, known popularly as the Anglo-Indians. The Anglo-Indian community identified with and was initially accepted by the British, with many Anglo-Indian children being sent to England to receive further education. However, the British soon felt threatened by the rapidly growing Anglo-Indian population and soon began imposing discriminatory restrictions on the Anglo-Indian community. In 1791, Anglo-Indians were barred from serving in the army of the English East India Company. Later, Anglo-Indians were barred from holding positions of authority in the civil, marine and military services of the English East India Company. In 1857, a major rebellion by the native Indian population took place against the rule of the English East India Company, which had begun to control a large part of the Indian subcontinent. The rebels sought to overthrow British power in the region and quickly created revolts and uprisings throughout much of northern and central India. The Anglo-Indian community sided with the British throughout the rebellion and was instrumental in aiding the British in securing victory against rebel forces. Due to the financial toll the rebellion had on the English East India Company, the territories controlled by the company were formally transferred to the direct control of the British Crown, with the English East India Company eventually being dissolved in 1874. Thus, British-controlled India became officially known as the British Raj. The Anglo-Indian community received some level of special treatment by British authorities during the British Raj period, with Anglo-Indians being given preferential employment in the colonial police force, railways, merchant navies and customs offices compared to their native Indian counterparts. For several generations, the Anglo-Indian community remained largely endogamous, with many Anglo-Indians preferring to intermarry with other Anglo-Indians. Moreover, their Western-oriented way of life, use of English as their primary language, and adherence to Christianity helped foster a strong sense of identity within the Anglo-Indian community, further serving to separate them from the native Indian population. In 1926, the All India Anglo-Indian Association was founded by Sir Henry Gidney, an Anglo-Indian community leader who sought to promote the welfare of Anglo-Indians living in the British Raj. The All India Anglo-Indian Association represented the Anglo-Indian community throughout the roundtable conferences of the early 1930s which took place between the British government in India and several Indian political entities to discuss constitutional reforms in India. During the roundtable conferences, the All India Anglo-Indian Association pushed for the creation of a separate province for the Anglo-Indian community, 
However, this proposal was largely rejected by British colonial authorities, who saw the Anglo-Indian community as too small to merit an entire province. After the independence of India from the British in 1947, many Anglo-Indians began leaving India to immigrate to the United Kingdom and other countries in the British Commonwealth, most notably Australia, Canada and New Zealand. However, a significant number still remained in India. During the post-independence period, the All India Anglo-Indian Association under Frank Anthony pushed for better representation of the Anglo-Indian community in the Indian Parliament. In 1949, the Indian government included Article 331 in the Indian Constitution, which mandated that the President of India could nominate up to two members of the Anglo-Indian community to the lower house of the Indian Parliament, if it is deemed that the Anglo-Indian community was not adequately represented. The article also mandated that 14 of India's 28 states had to nominate a member of the Anglo-Indian community to their respective state legislative assemblies. Moreover, the term Anglo-Indian was expanded to include other Eurasian communities that formed in various European colonies in the Indian subcontinent. This included the Louiso-Indians who descend from Portuguese colonists, the Franco-Indians who descend from French colonists and the Indo-Dutch who descend from Dutch colonists. According to Article 36.6 of the Indian Constitution, an Anglo-Indian is a person whose father or paternal ancestor is or was of European descent, who is domiciled within India and is or was born in India by parents who are Indian residents. Due to the currently low number of Anglo-Indians residing in India, the Indian Parliament passed the 104th Constitutional Amendment Act, which terminated Article 331 as of 2020. Anglo-Indians are primarily Christian, with many adhering to Protestant Christianity or Roman Catholic Christianity. A small minority also adhere to Hinduism, Islam or Sikhism. The Anglo-Indians have historically spoken English as a native language and are considered the only Indian ethnic group to speak English as a first language. The Anglo-Indian community also uses certain unique English colloquial expressions that are not used by mainstream English speakers, such as Ta, which means thank you, Almira, which means a wardrobe, Gok, which means a stupid person, Acha, which means okay, and Dulli, which means a food storage compartment. A significant portion of the Anglo-Indian community has also historically spoken various Portuguese-based Indian Creole languages due to the influence of Portuguese colonialism in parts of coastal India between the 16th and 20th centuries. Today, Portuguese-based Indian Creole languages are mostly spoken on the Malabar coast of southwestern India, particularly by Roman Catholic members of the Anglo-Indian community. Here is a short sample of a Portuguese-based Indian Creole language being casually spoken. Due to French colonialism in parts of southern India between the 17th and 20th century, some members of the Anglo-Indian community have also historically spoken a unique dialect of the French language known as Indian French. Even though Indian French has been greatly influenced by Tamil, Telugu and other South Indian languages, it is still mutually intelligible to mainstream French speakers. The French language continues to serve as one of the official languages of the Indian Union territory of Puducherry and is popularly taught in schools, universities and adult literacy classes. Here the short sample of Indian French being casually spoken. Bonjour, je m'appelle Jotermai Mondal, uh, j'ai 13 ans, uh, j'ai un cinquième, je suis dans son école pour six mois. 
The Anglo-Indian community is well known for its unique cuisine, which is mostly derived from British and Indian cooking styles, but also includes significant influences from Portuguese, French and Dutch cuisines. One prominent example of Anglo-Indian cuisine is chicken pishpash, which is a savory warm pot dish that consists primarily of rice, vegetables, chicken, spices, and green chilies. Another notable example of Anglo-Indian cuisine is Mouton Vindalu, which was initially brought to India by Portuguese sailors in the 16th century, but was later adopted by the British in the 18th century. Mouton Vindalu primarily consists of tender chops of mouton marinated in a special spice paste made with chilies, spices, vinegar, garlic, tamarind paste and ginger. Thanks so much for watching this video and if you enjoyed it make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to receive more videos like this. Thanks once again for watching and I will see you guys next time.